Hi, John here. In this video, we're going to be looking at the fresh water generator. I'm going to show you how we can turn seawater into fresh water. We're going to look at a certain type of fresh water generator. I'll show you all of its components. I'll show you how it works. And then I'll show you a different way that we can generate fresh water as well. So here we have our fresh water generator. I'll do a little spin so you can see it around the other side. Notice that this particular freshwater generator is open. We can actually see the cover here. So we can assume we've opened the cover and the cover normally sits around this area and it would be bolted together and then the space inside is sealed. Let's have a look around the back side. You can see we have some main connections. There are actually four of these. One, two, three, four. And then we have some minor connections that are going into the shell as well. Got one here, one here, one here, and a very small one here. We've got a control box in this cupboard. And down below that, we have a bottle, and this can be used for chemical dosing. This particular type of freshwater generator is a low pressure flash evaporator and we're going to use it to turn salt water or seawater into fresh water. Let's go through all the main components then I'll explain to you exactly how we're going to do that. The main metal body is referred to as the shell, that is this piece here. Within the shell we have a condenser, that is this piece a demister in the middle and a evaporator that is this piece here. The condenser and evaporator are types of plate heat exchanger. Below the shell we have an ejector sometimes referred to as an eductor that is this brass bronze looking item here. We then have a fresh water pump that's a small centrifugal pump and that is this item here. You'll also normally see appendages onto the shell itself. Around here you may have a thermometer, some sort of pressure gauge and on the top you'll normally have a safety relief valve and next to the safety relief valve which will be installed around about here you will have an air purge which is a type of valve that you use just to open the shell to atmosphere. So those are the two types of valves that go on the top, safety relief valve and air purge. And down here you have a pressure gauge and a thermometer and things like that. Let's have a look at the main connections first. In order to turn seawater into fresh water, we're going to need a connection to the sea. The connection to the sea will come from the sea itself through some form of strainer and it will connect at the top left here. The seawater will then pass through the plate condenser and it will exit over here. After it leaves the condenser, it's going to flow down this pipe here. Some of it will be diverted along here and some of it will go down to the ejector. The ejector is this item here. The bit of seawater that's diverted along here is the seawater that will be converted into fresh water. We can see the connection on the back if I zoom in slightly here. And we can see there's actually one connection here and another one here and those connect onto the base of the evaporator. Now that we're supplying seawater to the evaporator we need a heat source in order that we can evaporate some of the seawater. So what we'll do if we're on a ship for example we'll connect a heat source to this flange here and we'll remove the heat source from the evaporator over here. So we have an inlet and a discharge. We'll talk about the heat source in a moment, let's just go through the rest of the components first. If we come down we can see that the ejector is drawing out of the base of the shell and we can also see there's a small pipe here connected to the ejector and that small pipe is going to allow us to maintain a vacuum within the shell. We've got the freshwater pump, a small centrifugal pump here and we're going to use that to draw fresh water out of the fresh water generator. It's going to come out of this pipe here and we'll draw it down into the center eye of the centrifugal pump and then we'll discharge it through this pipe here and it will go to a storage tank. 
The type of water we get from a freshwater generator is distilled water or distillate. If we correct the pH value, add some minerals and use things like a UV filter to kill bacteria, then we can turn this distillate water into drinking water. So now we know all of the main components, let's discuss how it works. We've got seawater coming in here and seawater being discharged in the top right. It passes through the condenser and this means that the condenser is normally quite cool. It's going to be at seawater temperature. As it comes down, we feed some of it into the evaporator and that's what we're going to use to generate our fresh water. Now we need that water to evaporate, so we've got to have a heat source. If you work on a ship, the heat source is likely to be the jacket water system, that is to say the cooling water system of the main engine. The cooling water system of the engine is going to be around 80 degrees Celsius and we'll pass it in through the fresh water generator shell here and it will be discharged on the opposite side. The jacket water will heat the seawater and cause some of it to evaporate. The seawater that's evaporated is going to appear as a water mist in this area around here. Now not all of the seawater will evaporate and we don't want that anyway. Because if all the seawater evaporated we'd be left with nothing but salt on the plates of the plate heat exchanger. Now these particular types of plate heat exchanger used within the freshwater generator are unusual because they don't have two closed systems. The jacket water that's fed into this plate heat exchanger, I'll just see if I can go in so you can see some of the individual plates, you can see them here. The jacket water that's fed in is going to pass in and out without leaking at all outside of the plates. It is a closed system. Because the gaskets on the seawater side are not fully sealed, some of the seawater is going to be heated up and it's going to evaporate. So that particular system for the seawater side is open. So remember, normally a plate heat exchanger will have two closed systems, but in this particular type, both for the condenser and the evaporator, one system is always closed and one is open. So we've got the seawater evaporating and turning into a water mist. It will fill the space in the lower shell, that is this whole section along here and down here, and it will spread out to just below the demister, which is this section here. The water mist is essentially water vapour. That means the water vapour is going to pass through the demister, but if there are any carryover salts, those are going to be separated out and they're going to go back into the lower part of the shell. We'll actually end up with a brine solution in the lower section here. And the brine is concentrated seawater. It has a higher salinity than normal seawater. That's because we're evaporating some of the water away, but we're leaving some of the salt behind. So the salt concentration or the brine in the base is far greater than for normal seawater. So the water mist passes through the demister and it will enter the upper shell. The water mist is going to come into contact with the condenser plate heat exchanger. When it comes into contact with the condenser plate heat exchanger, it will condense because the condenser plates are cooler than the water mist. Specifically, they're below its condensing temperature. So now we'll have fresh water that has condensed and we're going to need to extract the fresh water from the fresh water generator. In order to do that, we have a connection around the back here. That is this pipe and we'll draw that all the way down to our centrifugal pump and we'll pump out the fresh water, normally to our distilled water tank. A fresh water generator like the one we're looking at now may make anywhere between five to 25 tons per day, but that really does depend upon how you set up the fresh water generator and how much water you want to get out of it. So that's essentially how we turn the seawater into fresh water. But you may have noticed that when we were talking about the jacket water system, the jacket water system is only at 80 degrees Celsius. In order to boil water at atmospheric conditions, you need to heat it to 100 degrees Celsius. So why is the water evaporating at 80 degrees Celsius? The reason the water is evaporating is because we're putting the entire shell 
under vacuum. If we lower the pressure within the shell, then we can lower the evaporation temperature. We put the entire shell under vacuum, and in order to do that, we'll use this connection here. That maintains our vacuum, and we'll use an ejector. You can see that the connection comes down, connects to the ejector, and the ejector is also drawing out our brine and discharging the brine as well. If you want to know a bit more about how ejectors work, then check out Bernoulli's principle. So we've put the entire shell under vacuum, we've lowered the boiling point of the water, and this means that 80 degrees Celsius is more than enough for the seawater to change state and form a water mist. Notice also that we're passing the seawater through the condenser first, and then it's being fed to the evaporator. We do this because the seawater is going to pick up a little bit of heat as it passes through the condenser. If we then pass this heated water to the evaporator, we're actually going to save some energy and make the plant more efficient. We're not going to need to take so much thermal energy away from the jacket water system because we've already preheated the seawater. So it's a very simple and effective means of increasing the efficiency of the plant. As I mentioned before, the water we get immediately after the freshwater generator is distilled water. This is not the water that you're going to be drinking. It's the water that you'll use for things like boilers, and for washing your hands, and for showering, and washing dishes, etc. If we treat the water, if we mineralize it, pass it through a bacterial plant to kill the bacteria, and control the pH of the water, then we can turn it into drinking water. There is another common method of converting seawater to fresh water, and that is via reverse osmosis. You can see all of the components of a reverse osmosis cylinder on the screen now. All of these components are pressed together inside the tube, and then we'll pump high pressure salt water through the tubes. The salt water will pass through the cylinder membranes, and we will separate some of the fresh water from the salt water. In a future video, I'll explain to you exactly how this process works. And we can even take a look at a working desalination plant. So now you know how we can turn seawater into fresh water. If you like this video, then feel free to like it or share it on social media. You can also subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you want to learn more about engineering related topics, then check out some of our online video courses. We've got online courses related to internal combustion engines, valves, pumps, heat exchangers, and many other topics. Our technical encyclopedia is free to access and has over 200,000 written words, hundreds of images, dozens of animations, and you can also access some of Savry's 3D models for free. Thanks very much for your time.